Right, a very brief introduction. connected with the floor. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Can you name one connected device? Your mobile phone. Your mobile phone. Your mobile phone. The computer. Your computer. Your car. <laughs> <laughs> yes, your car. Your watch. Your watch. TV. 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 Tablet. Your tablet. Tablet. Camera. 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 IP camera. Your microphone. My microphone. Fridge. Just mine. <laughs> <laughs> the fridge. Printers. Uh, I like this guy. <laughs> what else? Printers. The printers. Washing machines. Washing machines. Washing machines. Dishwashers. His robots actually are <laughs> different. Heating system. Heating system. Heating system. Glass. Air conditions. Lights. Lights. Yeah. Lights. Yeah. So practically everything that has power can potentially be connected. If there is scope for something to be connected, all we need is power. Okay, good. So, actually, in the previous years, there was a concept introduced. This was called machine to machine, and it was actually a sensor reporting information to a controller. And that was it. Anyone knows what is Nest? Yeah. It's like a temperature controller. It was developed by some guys who left from Apple. Actually, what Nest used to do was measuring uh, the temperature in your home and it was reporting it in your mobile phone. Full stop. It was essential, reporting to a controller. What can we do with this information? We can remotely control our uh, thermostat at home. Nice. However, later on they decided that, look, if we store this information somewhere on the internet, on some cloud system, we can make more use of this information. For example, you can control the temperature at home, but at the same time you will know how long your boiler works, how much energy you spend. And at the same time, the government will know how much energy is spent by an average three-bedroom house, for example, in the UK. And at the same time, the uh, British gas will know how much or how long do you use your boiler during the day and what are your gas needs. All right? How do we do that? We do not have a sensor reporting directly to three different locations. We upload this information on the cloud and this information is available to whoever has access on. And that is what we call the Internet of Things. So, for this event, our main interest, our main topic is going to be smart transportation. Let's watch a video. Anyone recognize this guy? Yeah. Anyone recognize this TV series? Yeah. Don't say, you, you, you actually say your age. All right. That was a TV series back in the 80s, in the early 80s actually. Let's see how many concepts we can identify from this series. Back then it was considered science fiction. Okay, look, look back. And we'll get to move in position through our spectrum forward. Ram to intercept intermediate target.
maximum speed. this video again and try to identify concepts that have been introduced back in the 80s. And kids move in position through our spectrum forward. Ram to intercept intermediate target. Somebody had access on his car from a remote location. These are actually the bad guys who actually have taken control of Kit. That was the name of the car. Okay, so you have a security threat. You had a smartwatch. You had a microcomputer actually that controls the entertainment unit of your car. And we had artificial intelligence. This car was actually responding to the driver. What else did you identify? Speech recognition. Speech synthesis. Speech synthesis. Sorry, I didn't hear that. Sorry, speech synthesis. So I don't know where I'm going. Speech synthesis. Speech synthesis. Yeah. Yeah. Vehicle to infrastructure communication. We had infrastructure, and that's the most important thing. Back in the 80s, we didn't have this infrastructure. We didn't have complete solutions. The computing wasn't to this level to allow smart devices, smart cars, driverless cars, connected cars, connected watches, and everything like this. Back then, it was science fiction. I was unborn, let's pretend, <laughs> at the time, but when I watched it, I thought it was science fiction. That thing could never happen. But here it is, it's happening. And even if somebody believes that this is science fiction, I'm telling you, it's happening and it will be happening very soon. When we mention the word transportation, what do we mean by transportation? We have cars, buses, trains, trams, tractors, lorries, taxis, ships, airplanes, but the most important thing is actually emergency vehicles. Okay? We want to make sure that the police will get on time when it's needed. We need to make sure that an ambulance will get on time, where and when it is needed. When we talk about transportation though, we do not only have vehicles. That's another one thing we'd like to remember. 
You have a bus depot, you have a port, you have airport, you have train stations, you have bus stops, you have taxi ranks. So when we mention transportation, we do not always mention the vehicle itself. Transportation actually includes the service and it also includes where the people get to take the bus, to take a taxi, uh, to take the ship. Alright? So when you will start thinking of your projects or the project you will be doing for dissertation next year or the project you will be doing for this uh, workshop, don't just think how I can make a vehicle smart. Alright, good. Main components of the Internet of Things is actually you need to have connectivity, you need to have a controller, you need to have a sensor, you need to have the cloud and some sort of an application. Connectivity and the cloud actually they work as a pair. You cannot connect on the cloud unless you have some sort of a connectivity. Sensor and controller also act as a pair. There is no information you can get from the sensor unless you have a controller to process it. Okay? And an application, maybe you can have, just down here you might have a large branch of different applications. When you apply the Internet of Things and when you want the Internet of Things to become your next business case, you always need to think, what impact do I do in the society? The impact in the society actually makes your business more successful and makes your community more successful. How do we do that? Let's ask Abby Weeks. 